conservation versus development. Uh, and so, in developing countries, this is a main problem, and this, is a, this was also my specialty, how to have pro projects which could support development. I visited uh, the site about 10 years ago, but I was not involved at the time with ICC. I was involved with the ICROM that was mentioned before, which is the Institute for the Preservation and Conservation of Cultural Property, which was a, a unit founded by UNESCO in '56 to serve the member states, many countries in the world, to install a training in conservation for their people, for their conservators. This was a need for many countries coming out of the Second World War, especially in the decolonized countries, which they want to have their own conservatory labs, their own conservatory studies, and so on. And ICROM and UNESCO decided this was a good idea, and so they instituted this organization based in Rome uh, to provide the training. And it has done, and one of my mission as director, I was the first and the last maybe Italian director there, uh, was to uh, help and to visit all the countries in which ICROM was needed. At, at the time, there was a, both a UNESCO meeting here and there was the, uh, a problem of a re a return, restitution, of uh, one of the statues that was in the United States, and we had provided a kind of advice how to deal with this issue, which is a kind of issue that Italy has often around the world, because many of our property has been scattered around the world. And so we used both these uh, uh, knowledge to help at the time the Cambodian government to deal with it. And at that time, I, for the first time, I was involved in some way with UNESCO and ECOMOS and the other organization here. On the other side, ECROM is one of the advisory body of the Convention of 72 about, uh, in, uh, in time, about, a concert, uh, about work heritage sites. But we serve as advisors for conservation, for training in conservation. Then. I left uh, ICROM, I retired, I was the old one and so And then I was, I've been requested uh, as an expert. I've been director of the Italian Archaeological Service for many years. I've served in Pompeii. I have a little bit of experience about uh, uh, conservation, excavation, management of archaeological site, dealing with problems. My country, even it's a big country, as some issue of development, uh, fighting uh, between, co so problems of uh, um, conservation versus development. Uh, and so, in developing countries, this is a main problem, and this, is a, this was also my specialty, how to have pro projects which could support development. And so, Okay. So, so, so it comes to, for example, the Uncle Park conservation. What is your comment on, uh, on uh, specifically on Uncle what uh, Park conservation? What is your comment? Oh, there was. I think that since the beginning, the best experts have been involved in this. And uh, uh, here was the moment in which different schools of conservation have joined their efforts in order to have a common view of conservation. This was a very good practice, a very good moment, because you see, uh, every country has its own history about conservation, but when you work together in one side, you have to melt, to put together your experiences and your way of thinking, and this was one of the main success uh, of the CIC, because they succeeded in unifying, in discussing the different perspective about conservation and unifying the methods. The, one of the best results was the Anchor Charter. Anchor Charter is a, 
a code, a written rule, how to deal with the issues of conservation. Uh, stone management, uh, uh, stone uh, reinforcement, uh, stone joining. There are different methods. Which one you have to choose? Uh, problems of contemporary dealing with uh, monuments and nature, presence of trees, vegetation, humidity, all these kinds of problems now are codified. You, can, you have a, a manual, a practice manual, uh, written in many languages, that uh, Cambodian and everybody who works here, but not only here. In general, in Cambodia, in the Southeast Asia, which has some similar problems, could look at it and know which was the lesson that Cambodia and uh, uh, Angkor is uh, doing, is, uh, is giving to the conservation world. And another thing is that this handbook, this manual, can be updated every some years you discover that there are new practices, now there is the leader, now there is the pottery, now there is other new. Uh, the world of the science moves. The world of uh, the, you have the drone today, you can have a perspective from the sky, you can check, you can monitor much better than it was 30 years before, and then you can update the practice of the conservation and of the tools of the conservation, and it will be the same. I'm not a chemist, but it will be the same with the chemistry, with the palynology, and with the, all the other sciences. So it's a, it's a very good deal, and it's a model for conservation for every country in the world. Uh, we are now in uh, Taprum Temple, and this part has been restored, and another part is still broken, so why another <laughs> part uh, is not uh, no, restored? No, you see, this, is, this was the most... The French uh, excavator's architect, Glaze, he told this is the most picturesque context mm -hmm. of, of, of Angkor. Because uh, the nature here and the, the ruins were so romantically embedded each other that it was, just from a sentimental point of view, difficult to, the, to deal with it. But then they choose a way which was uh, a middle way. We have to conserve the nature as far as possible, as far as not destructive of the monuments, in order that the people in the future can understand uh, how Angkor is arrived up to us. It is not a living monument anymore, uh, people by these citizens is a monument of the man embedded in the nature. And so, this original point of view of the excavator has been maintained by the CSA. And so, one part has been restored, these ruins, which was just a ruin, has been re remounted, but to another part has been left as such, as a ruin. And so the people can, as a, still, if they can look at the photographs of the Ecole Francaise, they can look at the drawings of the first traveler and see how it was and to respect. And this has given a lot of inspiration, even to the movie. <laughs> you see, you have a very beautiful movie of the beginning of the century with Angelina Jolie, etc. And it gives new, uh, new spirit even to young generation. So it means the rune is a beauty as well. Yes, of why, course. Why oh. that idea? Oh, of course. It, it, romantic is not just a philosophic idea, it's also the vision of the nature and the monument uh, together. Uh, when you see a flower in the stones, you like it, because they are different things combining each other. And here you have big trees with roots yeah. uh, attached to the monuments. And from the, the point of view of God, uh, nature and man are together. <laughs> the creation was one. <laughs> so do you have uh, any other comments for the next 10 days for, uh, for ICC? Uh, you see, 
we have some dossier open from the past. We have to update the anchor charter and we have to provide effective answers to what the Cambodian government and the, or the or world organization working in, in Angkor request. So there is a, 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 a problem of immediate res, uh, of a soon response to the problem. On the other side, there is also a problem that we con could consider from a larger perspective. We are from different countries. M people like Munir has a large vision of the world problems. And so we can also give ideas about what's happening in the future, in the larger future, not only in Cambodia, but on the larger world. So climatic change, immigration, these kind of problems that will not affect directly Angkor, not in the future, but these remain on the perspective. And so we have to consider also this one on the large vision, in the large vision. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor. Oh, my pleasure. And